Hey folks, and welcome to Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021. I am Technivorous, and in this series I'm going to show you from the beginning, step by step, how to use Tinkercad to create your own 3D printed objects. Stay tuned, there's a lot to see, and I've got plenty of these videos coming at you, so don't forget to subscribe. Hey folks, Technivorous here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around, because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. Hey folks, Technivers here. We are back in Tinkercad for another Tinkercad for 3D Printing Tutorial 2021. We are going to take a look at some of the options for the shapes they have available in Tinkercad. Now that we've discussed our object manipulation, we've done importing, exporting, and a lot of other basic, basic tools that you're going to use in conjunction with Tinkercad. Now we're going to talk about some of the options that are built in to some of the primitives here. So let's go ahead and grab a polygon to start so I like the polygon you've seen this before I stretched it out I split it apart I did lots of things but what I didn't show you is that you can change the number of sides by selecting the object and just sliding this bar here so um, you can get a pentagram a uh, all, I mean it goes all the way up to 12 so you can take it all the way down to a triangle if you like. So that is pretty interesting. The other thing is you can bevel the edges on this item. And the radius of the bevel is determined by this slider here. And there are some other options as well. Now the segments are going to basically divide that bevel up and give you a smoother shape. So all of these shapes have different parameters that you can manipulate depending on what shape it is. Um, this one is going to be steps. That's basically how many times around it goes in the circle. So that's um, a lot of stuff to look at and a lot of options to attempt to check here. Box is pretty simple. You have the radius, the steps, the length, the width, and the height. If you adjust the radius, it will turn that box into a sphere. So your cube can go anywhere in between here. So we do also have a sphere object and that one is gonna have steps as well. That's gonna determine how rounded the object is. So that is going to increase your polygon count and give you a smoother spherical object. And that's pretty simple. One of the other tools we haven't covered yet is this scribble here, which is actually pretty cool. Um, you can select a work plane and you can just kind of draw out what you want and it'll show you a preview of that object so um, you can zoom in here add multiple objects and then connect them and it is pretty cool when you're done you just hit done and you are left with this uh, squiggly object that you drew you can adjust the height you can adjust the width things like that this is pretty cool if you want to do like um, some sort of signature or something works better with a tablet but it does work fairly well um, we have other options in here as well and remember these are just the basic shapes that we're covering in this episode so the wedge is going to have its own tools as well um, not really much to change on the wedge other than the height width and length there is the pyramid here that one's going to be able to change the number of sides once you get up there obviously it turns into a cone and kind of the same with um, the opposite you can go the, back the other way and, and so we have two different stars this one is a pyramidal star with a top point um, it doesn't look like a star from the side but it does from the top and you can change the number of points on the star which is kind of cool you can also change the inner radius if you want those points to be thinner and longer and this object is just a simple star shaped object it is not led to a point at the apex there it's got a flat surface for the top and doesn't have the ability to adjust the number of sides and things like that the other objects in here are an icosahedron which is basically a 20 sided die and you can't really manipulate that much but you can go in if you're into role playing games and use the work plane tool to put numbers on different faces or symbols and make your own dice you can do that with this one as well and it is pretty interesting um, let's say I wanted to let's just put a diamond on there 
and we'll scale that way way down and just kind of push it into there and yeah just an example of how you can combine things into your dice shape there there is a heart there is a tube and a torus now the tube is not to be confused with the torus the torus is rounded all around and while it does have some manipulatable properties let's take our workplace back to normal such as um, tube itself and radius and things like that it is not the same as a tube so the tube object uh, you can change the radius the inner radius which is determined by the wall thickness and then you can adjust it and make an actual tube and then you can adjust um, whether or not you want a bevel on it which is going to turn it very torus like and how many segments are in that bevel but it is still a tube it still retains the inner shape without rounding it off like it would in the torus so the heart shape don't use too often I'm not sure if there's tools for that nope doesn't look like it does much the half sphere comes in handy roofs are basically just wedges that are not at an angle so uh, or, <laughs> that's a dumb statement they obviously have angles but they're not a right angle let's see I think that pretty much covers everything um, other than the text and the text is cool because yeah you can go in here and grab the individual text and numbers in there but with the text tool you can manipulate what it says right here usually oh, it won't let me alright what's going on here there we go and you can change the font there's only a few in here which if you want something outside of that obviously you can make it up in blender or something and import it in here now why would you use two programs that's a question for another day but there are often times when I make things in blender and pull them in here um, you can adjust the height you can add a bevel you can add segments to the bevel and round it so that'll give you a little bit of a rounded appeal although it is distorting this quite a bit up here in the corner it's kinda hard to see um, right here uh, that might have to do with the height change there um, yeah so that's gonna be it for this one guys I've showed you basically what all of these basic shapes do in the next couple episodes we'll be going over some of these other items in here and we'll be building some actually useful models so stay tuned don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button down below we will see you in the next video stick around guys I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here and if you haven't already subscribe 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 make sure that you smash that like button we'll see you in the next one Technivorous out this is Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021, and I am Technivorous. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful to you, and stick around. We'll see you in the next one.